National Geographic Kids, Harriet Tubman by Barbara Kramer. Who was Harriet Tubman? Harriet Tubman when she was about 46 years old. Harriet Tubman was born a slave. This meant she was not free. Even as a child, she had to work hard for her owner or master. She had to do as she was told. She could not leave his farm. As a young woman, Harriet made a daring escape to freedom. Then she put her own life in danger again to lead other slaves to freedom. She is a hero to many for being so brave. Word to know, slave, a person who was considered to be property and was owned by another person. A slave had to work for no pay and was usually mistreated. A girl called Minty. Harriet Tubman was born in Dorchester County, Maryland, USA around 1822. Her parents named her Araminta. They called her Minty. Later, she changed her name to Harriet. Harriet was also her mother's name. Harriet and her eight brothers and sisters spent their early years in a cabin, much like this one. That's a fact. No one knows Harriet's exact birth date. Her parents could not record it because they could not read or write. When Harriet was about six years old, her master sent her away to work on other farms. She cleaned houses and later worked in the fields. At night, she cried because she missed her family. Slaves worked long hours on the farm. One day when Harriet was a teenager, she went to the store for supplies. There was another slave at the store. He ran from an overseer. The overseer grabbed a two pound weight from the counter and threw it at the fleeing boy. It missed him and hit Harriet in the head instead. For the rest of her life, Harriet had terrible headaches. She also fell asleep suddenly even when she was talking or working. Word to know, overseer, a person who was in charge of a master's slaves. Harriet was badly hurt at this village store in Bucktown, Maryland. It is now a museum. In her time, in the 1820s, growing up as a slave was very different from growing up as a child who was free. School. Slaves could not attend school. Teaching them to read or write was against the law in some states, and education would give them power. Home. Slaves lived in small cabins with dirt floors. Whole families were crowded into one room. They often had no beds, so they slept on straw on the floor. Underground Railroad. Some slaves escaped from their masters through the Underground Railroad. The people who led them to safety were called conductors. Rights. Slaves had no rights and were usually mistreated. They were listed as property along with their owner's animals. They could be sold to other masters to work without pay at any time. Children were often taken from their parents to be sold. Escape. In 1844, Harriet married John Tubman, a free black man. She dreamed of being free too. The Mason-Dixon line marked the border between the slave state of Maryland and the free state of Pennsylvania. But in time, that name came to stand for the dividing line between all slave and free states. At that time, the United States was divided. There were free states in the North and slave states in the South. Harriet wanted to escape to a free state, but John would not go with her. It was against the law to help a slave escape. Word to know, free state, a U.S. state that did not allow people to own slaves. An actress playing Harriet Tubman in a movie about her life. In 1849, Tubman learned that she was going to be sold by her master. So she made a plan to escape. One night when everyone was sleeping, Tubman crept out of her cabin. She went to the home of a white woman who hid her. The woman also gave Tubman the names of others who would help. Tubman was now on her way north using the Underground Railroad. 
That's a fact. People who travel the Underground Railroad were called passengers. Safe houses where they could hide were called stations. Tubman traveled at night. It was easier to hide from slave catchers in the dark. One night, a man let her ride in the back of his wagon. Most of the time, Tubman walked. She traveled 90 miles north to Pennsylvania, USA. Word to know, slave catchers, men who were paid rewards to find escaped slaves and return them to their masters. While making their way to freedom, people sometimes hid in the back of a wagon. They were covered with straw or grain bags so no one would see them. In 1849, there was a law that said owners could take back their slaves, even from free states. Tubman could live and work as a free person in that state, but there was still danger. Slave catchers could find her and take her back to her master. In her own words, I looked at my hands to see if I was the same person now that I was free. Helping Others Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1850 Tubman went to Philadelphia. She cleaned homes and worked as a cook at a hotel, but she could not stop thinking about her family. She wanted them to be free too, so she became a conductor on the Underground Railroad. In her own words, my home, after all, was with the old folks and my brothers and sisters. I was free, and they should be free also. Her first rescue was in December 1850. Tubman's niece and her niece's two children were about to be sold. Tubman helped them escape. This drawing shows Tubman leading others to freedom. In the spring of 1851, Tubman led one of her brothers and two other people to safety. Later, she helped her parents and other family members escape. Each trip meant danger for Tubman. Slave catchers were looking for her, but fear did not stop her. This church in Pennsylvania served as a station on the Underground Railroad. That's a fact. Tubman fooled some slave catchers by holding up a newspaper like she was reading it. They knew she couldn't read, so they walked right past her. Tubman's master posted a notice in the newspaper offering $100 for her return. Today, that would be like offering more than $3,000. From 1850 to 1860, Tubman made a total of 13 trips back to Maryland. She bravely led about 70 people to freedom. In her own words, I can say what most conductors can't say. I never ran my train off the track and I never lost a passenger. Six cool facts about Harriet Tubman. Tubman earned the nickname Moses for her work as a conductor on the Underground Railroad. Moses was a man who led his people to freedom from slavery in ancient Egypt. Tubman used music to send secret signals to the people she led to freedom. When she sang a song such as Bound for the Promised Land, they knew it was time to leave. Tubman's Hymnal People around the world admired Tubman. In 1897, Queen Victoria of England gave Tubman a silver medal and a silk lace shawl. Later in her life, Tubman worked for equal rights for women. She gave speeches about her life and about fair treatment of all people. This statue of Tubman stands in the Harlem area of New York City. Two national parks honor Tubman in her work. The Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad National Historic Park in Maryland and the Harriet Tubman National Historic Park in New York, USA. In 1859, Tubman moved from Pennsylvania to this home in Auburn, New York. It's now part of the Harriet Tubman National Historical Park. A Secret Spy In 1861, the Civil War began between free states in the North and slave states in the South. Tubman believed the war would lead to freedom for slaves. She wanted to help. She worked as a nurse to Northern soldiers. She was also a spy. She would sneak behind enemy lines to gather information for the North. No one took notice of a woman who seemed to be just another slave. 
Tubman helped soldiers from the North during the Civil War. That's a fact. In June 1863, Tubman led a surprise military attack in South Carolina, freeing more than 750 slaves. She was the first woman to lead a Civil War raid. More work to do. After the war, Tubman went home to Auburn, New York. She had lived there since 1859. Her parents lived with her. Her home was also a place where newly free people could go. This is the city of Auburn, New York as it appears today. Tubman's husband, John, never did join her in the North. He died in 1867. Two years later, she married Nelson Davis. They adopted a daughter, Gertie. In 1908, Tubman opened a home in Auburn for elderly African Americans. She moved into the home herself when her health began to fail. Tubman died on March 10, 1913. She was about 91 years old. Today, the Harriet Tubman Home for the Aged is a National Historic Landmark that people can visit. Tubman was brave and kind. Today, her story inspires many people to fight for equal rights and to always help others. Tubman in 1911, when she was about 89 years old. Let's review the words to know. Free state, a U.S. state that did not allow people to own slaves. Overseer, a person who was in charge of a master's slaves. Rights, basic freedoms protected by law, such as the right to live, learn, and work as one chooses. Slave, a person who was considered to be property and was owned by another person. Slave catchers, men who were paid rewards to find escaped slaves and return them to their masters. Underground Railroad, not a real railroad, but a secret network of people who helped slaves escape to freedom.